when we were talking about this, um, it's one thing I've always thought. There's two things I don't understand in handball. One, how you become a handball goalkeeper, or two, how you become a referee. So <laughs> what's the, what was the motivation for you guys to become a referee in the first place? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, what's the motivation? Uh, we played, both of us, 10 years. And then in uh, one moment, it was 1999, uh, 21st of April. I know everything. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, let's say, some course for, for new referees. And in that moment in uh, Croatia, in those parts where we are living, uh, almost all clubs was, was uh, or second division or a little bit low. And we say to ourselves, Excited. we would like to, to stay in handball. Let's try with uh, handball uh, refereeing. There is no some, you know, that we get some uh, motivation from I don't know where. Uh, and we go to this course uh, in that moment. Only that first year, as Boris and I, we, we've been on the same course, but we didn't uh, been couple in that moment. And uh, when we start uh, to, to whistle, in one moment we whistle together too, we feel immediately that uh, we could be good in this, you know. And then after year by year, we saw that uh, we was in that moment right. And uh, then we decide uh, almost immediately, when we start now to, to be a referee, Let's give our best on every game and to see how far we can uh, go. Thinking like this, it's still in every game on uh, our mind and we are really giving our best in every game just to see how far we can uh, go. But we never had some pressure, you know, we must be this or some uh, crazy ideas. We want to whistle uh, like a final of Euro or final of uh, World Championship. But when you have approach what uh, we had, then uh, in our case, we did it. We had a final of Euro, we had a final of uh, women's and, and men's world championship. We only need a final, I hope, of Olympic Games. And then it's something what you can do in a referee life. Uh, that, that's it. There is no more after that. We have semi-final from London. But if we go this year, first we need to go uh, in some case, if we get final of uh, Olympic, that's it then. That's a triple. It's not triple double, but... <laughs> <laughs> then you give up. <laughs> but, uh, Boris, did you... Uh, you knew each other then before? Yeah, players. of course. We played together. Oh, come on. We did... No, we didn't know each other. Come <laughs> <laughs> You have a completely different story how to yeah. start it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> He's like, we, we had a great connection. He's like, oh, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing in this room with him. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, uh, we were playing together in the same team, maybe, and and after what Matija told, uh, certain stances uh, put the teams that we were playing go to the second or the third division, because in this part of the our region, and then we decide, okay, we are not so good players to be national team players, and then we, we decide, okay, let's try to do us something something new, and then we choose to go, okay, let's go to the pass this course and then we pass it and maybe the crucial thing is uh, what what Matija forget to mention it it's that when we started to do this we never had a plan to be on that kind of the level what we are now here we are just enjoying in this and till to this moment we still enjoying this after that when we feel that not not anymore enjoying probably we're gonna stop it or here and that's I think the most important thing that you are, if you're doing any job you need to have a power you need to have to enjoy it just enjoy it and that's the job what are you doing? motivation motivation how do you describe each other's roles because working as a pair as a couple oh, you you want to you want to ask who is a wife who is a man yes <laughs> <laughs> but sure i i guess there there are certain situations where i mean you, you try to set each other up or you, you would have a feeling that uh you know you have to back each other up or somebody's going to make a certain decision there is it is there something like that in uh, in refereeing usually from the first day we know what's a part on the field have one and what part of the field have another one when you are goal referee field referee you have different roles of course but uh, what you mean maybe some mistakes what one have you know uh, another one have that's normal and we look on that like normal things and in we always say in every game 
who have three, four mistakes on each side in the, the game, he's really, really uh, good uh, referee. It's impossible to, to whistle without mistakes. Only his problem is uh, if it's eight uh, mistakes on one side and zero on another one, then it's something bad, <laughs> you know. Then but if it's problem. three, four here, three, four there, that's absolutely normal. We always say to, to young colleagues too, you know, when, when uh, we teach them, players, they are training, some of them, most of them, two times per day. Some of them maybe even three times per day. And they still miss penalty shot, uh, clear uh, sh- shot, you know. And it's that's normal. This is something what we want to, to, to coaches understand too, you know. We are human beings and it's it's really, it's impossible. Uh, 150 or 200 uh, decisions uh, per match in today's handball, it's impossible to be... 100% uh, correct, you know. Yeah. But if it's 3-4 there, 3-4 here, and th- then when he's making mistakes, for me, that's normal. I know I will make it probably in three attacks so after the same one. So. This is the normal when I made mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're aiming for perfection, but perfection is impossible. You aim to be, uh, let's say, almost perfection uh, 99%, but per- perfection is like in life. Yeah. It's impossible. You yeah. strive to be best, and that's a good thing. But if you are striving to be, you know, perfect, it's impossible. Yeah, it's really impossible. It's one thing. Another thing I never understood as well is that, I mean, everyone knows that the players want to play in those big games, the finals, the semi-finals, and get up there and play on the big stage. But one thing that people kind of forget about is the referees also want to whistle or to, to referee those matches, the big matches, and that's something I never understood. I'm like, that's way too much responsibility. That's probably why I'm not a referee. I want to stay away from those big games. Easy. Maybe want to play in them, but not be responsible for making those decisions. Talk to us a bit about some of the bigger games you've been involved in and what it was like for you. Everybody wants to be on the top position, of course, and even the players, even the referees. Uh, the responsibility for that kind of the match, for the finals and everything, of course, there is a pressure. There's a big pressure. You try to move from your mind, from everything, your pressure, but one mistake can decide the winner or the loser. Especially in the finals, you can be the European or World Championship Olympic champion. But uh, with the experience and with the games, you need to adapt in your head that final should be like ordinary, normal game. And if you fix it in that your mindset that is just a normal, usually game, just a normal one, a quoted normal game, then you probably will control everything and your pressure in the mind will be a little bit down and then you can manage it during the game and everything. So the players also, even the players, okay, they know they're playing the final, but for them who first get uh, adapted into the head that is the normal, usually game, they will probably in the in advantage on the other side. Because if you're going to mindset that you are Okay, now in final, it's watching me 50 million people, it's 20,000 spectators in the sport hall. Then you probably go going down, 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 down. But you need to build up your before the game and say, okay, this is the normal game. Game, if we have uh, this game, this is the final, this is the decisive moment. Focusing much, much more on everything because it's really one mistake and decide the winner or the loser. But it's like in other, other games. Also, one one match can one one ball can decide who's going to be winner, who's going to be the loser. But you, are Brian, uh, absolutely uh, correct. I can understand you. You know, it's what Boris say. You are trying every game, you know, to to put pressure down. But in today's handball, from day to day, how uh, time is going, it's uh, most and most uh, more and more difficult. You know, it's faster handball, uh, more decisions. Uh, more media's uh, audience, uh, so it's in many games on this level. It's not easy, especially because in uh, one team you have if you something do bad, uh, you have all your teammates who will t- tell to you, "Don't worry, that's normal." And we have only two of us. If we did a good job, you know, explanation is, of course, you are top-level referees. That's, uh, That's your job. expecting <laughs> this from you. But if you something do bad, you know, one, and one mistake is uh, enough to, to do it bad, then you are almost alone, you know, because then everybody are against you. Medias, players, uh, one team, another team. But com- comparing for also for the handball and this pressure, what we are talking now, compare 
Byť, fut, byť futbolic na to. No, futbol, ja, ja, it's a joke, yeah. But uh, when you compare uh, pressure from the media or outside, just compare 10 years ago or 15 years, what was the media interest for the handball and what is the media interest no. now for yeah. this situation? And it's, this is, of course, this is the product is growing up and everything is... This, what you're doing now, we didn't have even three years ago, you know? Yeah. And now we have it. Probably in uh, two more years from now, you will have something... TV studio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have two robots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the past, you had two cameras. Now you have, I don't know how many cameras, 15 on the games. And uh, even our mistakes, we have, when we watch Everybody it, we analyze it. every day, it's from the 10, 15 uh, uh, angles, you know? And it's uh, today, it's really, we need to be focused six, six, 60 minutes. To, to, to stay calm and make good decisions. It's interesting what you said there about you only have each other uh, at the end of the day. And I'd say particularly when you go to league games and European Cup, Champions League games, that's very clear. But at these major championships, you're surrounded as well by other referees and the delegates and Dragan as yeah. you're the, like the leader of the referees. What's the interaction like between between you then on a daily basis during the championship? Is it all about refereeing, refereeing, kind of sharing tips, making jokes about uh, what may have happened, or do you try to stay away from uh, the topic when you're having lunch and dinner? Uh, let's say mix. Uh, most of it is, of course, handball, you know. But I, to, today we was together, Chris, you and me, in, in gym, and there was... Pumping iron. A few more pumping, little bit. <laughs> and there was a few more colleagues uh, there, and it's uh, you could see... We have really interaction between us, like real friends. You know, some other when we come home, ask us, "Oh, you know, who who whistle? You didn't whistle, they whistle." You know, from the first day, I think everybody here, and it's usually in championship, don't care who is whistling because we know sometimes is some neutral factors important. Sometimes is your team is in, not in, and. We all want to, to give to our friends support and when they make mistakes, nobody's happy because we know we can be tomorrow in the same situation, you know, and we are really team here and when somebody is not good, that in, in influence on uh, all others, you know, we are trying really then what you say, this is opportunity to be together and we, we are trying then to, to, to put all the heads together and stay calm and go go next match be better you know so yeah. it's something like family you know yeah. we need to live together for 20 days 25 days together and it's when you have a bad situation it's really influence on everybody you know because you need to this is this is your friend tomorrow you will go have the match and we will probably have another situation which maybe cause the same problems what I have the day before but uh, after that trying to the lunch or sad dinner or breakfast, trying to a little bit to not talk about to handball. relax, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, to relax talking about ordinary life things, you know, it's nothing. Just don't put the pressure on the handball, 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 because 20 days if you're living on the handball, then you will gonna become the crazy or I don't know yeah. what, jump from the window. And, yeah, so, so it's look, I think it's the same with you, you know, you can uh, joke and, and laugh on some other things, but still on mine, you have. This is what you are doing, and most of things is around this because this is handball is our life for Boris and me last 30 years. You know, we are 10 years players now, 20 years uh, referees, and it's you cannot uh, run from that. That's your life. That's part of us, and then we can say each other when you know at home when we don't have a game. Sometimes on the weekend, it's uh, maybe in a week. Uh, but weekend is free, then we say each other, it's crazy, you know, it's, uh, we, we are not used to it that we are at home. <laughs> we like it, we like it, but it's different, you know. <laughs> different responsibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> different responsibilities, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in that sense, it's probably, it sounds like it's a little bit easier than when you have a Champions League game and you go home on your own and you go back the next day and maybe you, you didn't have your best game and you have to kind of sit with your own thoughts, whereas you, here you're surrounded by referees and maybe, as you said, they can pick you up a little bit. Okay, um... Uh... When we are talking about this, uh, Matthew mentioned that we are too alone of us. Of course, there you have you have a bad days, you have the bad games and everything. But uh, you need to you you need to know how to live with mistakes. Okay, so if you made the bad perform performances, you need to analyze to get uh, all negative turn around to the positive things to see what was what was the wrong to feel it and then growing up with this negative to 
become mm-hmm. the positive. So sometimes it's really difficult, but thanks God we didn't have this bad situation yeah. that we <laughs> we are going down into some depressed or something that kind of the situations. But you need to live it, and this is what uh, I always compare. Uh, like a tennis player, you know, tennis player. If he will, if he is thinking about the ball, what he missed it point before, he's gonna miss missed another point, and then going there. So this is also like in the refereeing. Okay, we have a half of the second, one second to decide: is it good or it is a bad. What kind of good, what kind of decision is it? If it's bad, we need to live with this bad decision. Okay, forget it and move on. Let's go. Let's go because it's. And then, but after the match, you analyze everything, and then if if it's bad performance, then you be you need to be critic to yourself first of all. Start from yourself, and then what I do to not make mistakes, what Matia made to not make this mistake, and what we like a couple do it to avoid any things for the future and everything. So it's but after two hours, three hours, when you get it your mind out, then you are fix it again, and okay. We are stepping back and we are on the back track, on the track again, and that's it. Yeah, I, I presume you stay away from comments under videos online and stuff like that. If you maybe had not not your best game ever, you don't go on reading comments from fans or anything like that. You are right. Usually, uh, don't. Yeah. We are really usually don't because I, I personally think, I don't like those uh, anonymous comments. You know, I respect everybody, but if you want to say something, then put your name in front and say it loud and clear. Then I, then I can respect this. This what somebody uh, writing or not writing, that's his right, of course. But, but uh, we all know 99% of those comments are extremely subjective. And if your team lose, then it's bad comments. If your team won, then it's good comments. And <laughs> our decisions is here. You know, if uh, they won, we are fantastic. If they lose, uh, then we are bad. You know, so th- th- this is the reason why we usually... I think it, Boris have the, the, the same same opinion. Usually, don't read this. Maybe from time to but time, you know. On, to... I'm one of the anonymous, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm putting it. <laughs> and this, in this constant pursuit of the like, uh, trying to reduce the mistakes as much as possible, which we know is almost impossible in in handball, is uh, instant replay. And in the last few years, it's been uh, growing in handball, and I think. Uh, has been used very well at this championship. A lot of comparisons are used to football as well because in the last year or so it's become a big part in football and I mean if you look at the Premier League for example it seems to be an absolute disaster. But here in handball you uh, you seem to have a lot more control over it. You know the exact situations which can be used in. Yeah. How do you perceive it? And like what what does what does instant replay mean to you too as referees? But uh, when you ask me about uh the same opinion probably we're gonna have it uh, about this video technology I, let's say technology using I think it's fantastic whatever okay we are not talking about a football in a, a premiership what what's happening with there but I think that in the handball we are on the good way to use this technology because the only question is and the really good question is get the right decision no matter what is uh, did you perform this or this but get the right decision okay there is a few things what should be done it put it on the paper how to use this technology okay we have now this opportunity to see some situations to have really a correct decision about a red card or a two minutes or something like this but maybe for the future to improve some kind of the situations where we can also use it in some kind of the positions or what is it uh, this or is it this but that should be really careful with this and should be some procedures put it on the table or on the paper to see how it's going to be managed but I think if everybody is doing in all sports if you are going if you are want to grow up as a sport I think that we should use this video technology because handball is and you know it's going fast and faster so it's really and the players are using this uh, dirty yeah. fouls, you know, and everything that it's really sometimes it's really not possible to see from the yeah. angle of the position of the referee. But when you have the angle from the opposite side of the camera, then you can see really what what happened in this situation. Because only two of us, four eyes, and we cannot cover everything, especially when come three or four players on the one yeah, Who's, but, who, who hit somebody? I don't know. Everybody's <laughs> falling down. I don't know. Now I need help, you know. It's not possible. Yeah, but that's normal again. But what you say, Chris, uh, maybe because we have strict 
guidelines, situations yeah. yes. and guidance yeah. when when we can use it maybe there's a reason why it's for now it's so good because it's really few situations when you can use it red or blue two or uh, red if something happened behind your back you know you could not see we cannot use it for steps for double or four and then when i saw some players you know to showing the, ge- the tv the gesture yeah, yeah. <laughs> look it's it, it, they probably or don't know or maybe they know but still little bit provoke but we cannot use it for any situation in the match we have strictly goal, no no goal, red card, uh, something from behind the back, and that's it. You know, all other things are still on uh, our own. And then when he sh- when he showed me, you know, video, video, I would say to him, my friend... Two minutes. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> yeah, it's almost a bit like poker, isn't it? Look, go check, go check. It's like, <laughs> it's like, but I mean, how do you control that? How do you, or how do you not uh, avoid creating a culture where everyone's just going to be making that um, shape with their... I think I think that uh, probably uh, all players, most of them know how it's going, or even coaches. But maybe coaches didn't tell them. You know, they have some other things on mind, of course. Uh, when we can use it, and they probably thinking we can use it. You know, and then when you see that uh, Boris and I, we always have on mind that's in the games. It's always emotions, and they want to win. You know. And in 90, 95%, I'm sure they are doing this because they really think we can check, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So you are trying not to, to think about that like provocation. But if he is doing uh, five, six times uh, per match, same, same player, then what Chris say? Two minutes, my friend, now this is provocation. Now, and we, now, we will go and now you will learn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess things like that one are a good way to maybe deal with the culture. And, and first of all, teaching people what you're allowed to, to check. And then and second of all, then instilling a, a bit more discipline uh, yes. and respect for the referees. And we see it in some sports, there's there's very little. And then other sports like rugby, where only the captain can talk to the the referees is the opposite end of it. I mean, is there anything in that sense, like in the way that referees are being dealt with, or even even maybe uh, with rules, that if you had to choose one thing you could change tomorrow, that you would? That may be a tough question because four years ago, when it was... Yeah, some changes of the rules, yeah, that was... Big changes, yeah, four or five years ago. Uh, it was uh, most of things... Uh, what then then is uh, done changed, changed was uh, n- now uh, really good, yeah. you know. But I want I know what you what kind of the question you want you want to ask me about passive play or something like this. No, yeah. no, no, no. I'm getting the <laughs> shot clock or time attack there. or something. Yeah. Like that. We, we actually asked fan, oh, uh, fans. We actually asked listeners for questions because we knew you were coming on. Okay. The questions to your referees. Okay. And that was one of them. Yeah. If, if you could okay. change a rule in the morning, what would it be? Okay, maybe uh, what uh, all about uh, talking about about media, about everything that we should have some clock like in uh, basketball. Uh, to be honest, for the referees, we are avoiding this subjective uh, decision from the side of the referee. When we're going to put the hand up or not, how many decide. If we have this clock, it's okay. Then you're depending on the time. But it's uh, when you. It's easy to say, but to get it into implementation of oh, yeah. the rules, it's really difficult because you know the handball is uh, uh, the basketball is not co- is contact is not contact sport. Yeah. Every time you touch, time is stopping. Yeah. Handball is a contact sport. Nothing is stopped till the referees give the timeout. So there is lots of the questions, open questions, yeah. still to be get, uh, determined and get the answer. How it should be solved if you get this shot clock uh, and how it's going to be is it going to be 35 45 50 seconds it's and what happens then when you get a foul what's happening with this time and then you will probably maybe you maybe from the side of defense lots of the aggressive defense foul 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 shot clock is going down down then it's going to be some shot from the 10 meters no more goals anymore and then the wingers don't touch the ball anymore <laughs> yeah this, 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 not this easy is, how it yeah. looks it's, like you know everybody wants you know but it's lots of the que- open questions yeah. who needs to put it on the table and to answer do you feel that calling of passive play so that the moment that you you find that the hand goes up uh, that it's being refined that it's improving with every championship that every time you come together and with the yes the knowledge growing every time that you're getting closer and closer to a uh, one line in every championship my personal opinion is yes 
and I think those rule is a really good rule, much better than the the, the in the past how it uh, was. You know, now you have uh, at least players all know they accept it. They know they have six passes maximum. Of course, if they are not doing anything on a second pass, you can take the ball. But uh, I think they, uh, I will not say like the rule, but it's much better than uh, the rule in the past about passive play. Another question was, um, what's the most difficult call to make at the moment? I think for a lot of fans, maybe attacker foul is probably one which people don't really understand sometimes because it seems to become a bit of a grey area. Uh, uh, absolutely right, yeah. It's because... Uh, Attacker in the air, defender is a defender in the first position, or it's on the. Then you must. And it's milliseconds. It's milliseconds. Yeah. Then you need to know the attacker when he's attacker in the air, he cannot change his moving path. Then in that moment, so it's really, and as we said, we are not the basketball. We are the contact sport, and then it's sometimes. But okay, we have some common line, and we are doing. Then we have some uh, integrated into the rules and everything, how it's here procedure, what we, and about this attacking fall, it's everything about anticipation how it's going to finish because if you have open gap between the two players and when it's player of course that he's going to jump and now in that moment if they close and in the air that's probably it's going to be the seven meter not clear offensive foul so it's something that we have something in the by experience by the rules and everything so it's this is all Tough call, really tough call because you need a half a second to decide from inside or outside where it started. So it's yeah. that's the problem. If you don't see immediately when the if defender, he's inside, if he's can inside, be seven then, meter, then if it's outside, then can be empty. You know, it's really if you we comment in, in many situations. If you only see the last part of the, the situation, then then it's not good. You know, uh, sometimes player can use the, the space and then go out, but and still make. he make advantages because he use it one meter inside or something like that. But he's then in the last moment he is already out, but still he used space to gain advantages. And then if he get get, get some advantage from that movement, it must be like he's in uh, inside, uh, no matter what he's now outside. You know, so it's. Many many uh, difficult situations. That's the, re- the reason why we have every day the, the analysis yeah. and then uh, watching the games, uh, many clips every day. I don't know, Dragan uh, put on the, the screen. Uh, no, that's normal. We must yeah, do it. Yeah. But we, every day we have uh, three games, and in from each games he have 20, 30 clips, and he put ten. You know, but uh, but still that's. Uh, 30 uh, clips and uh, discussion after each clip. Uh, if we have something to ask, you know, it's it's. We are working really hard to, to improve ourselves, but s- sometimes, you know, in those fast handball, one millisecond is really dangerous. Do you think that knowing the players and the way they operate on the court is even more important than because of the speed of the game? And there are certain players who, like you said, might try to use advantages in certain ways, certain behaviors they, they display. Does knowing the way that they play help that? Or do you try to, to look at it from a completely like maybe neutral, of course, but not t- making any assumptions about how players behave? Excellent question. Because, you know, the teams are preparing for themselves, for the next team, who is also as with the referees, we know who's going to teams are going to whistle next game. And of course, we know each other, all the players from the, these teams, because you know them for a long time. And then you can know, ex- you know what to expect from some kind of the, the players. But to not be uh, high focusing on this player, you say, Chris, that yes, we need to go come totally neutrally on the game. But you know, you have, let's say, eyes on this player and you are aware what he is capable to do, especially in defense, what in attack and everything. And you take care about this situation. So we are preparing also for the game, like the the teams analyzing opposite team. So this is what we also do for the the players and everything else. So it's really preparing. But when you get on the court, it's really starting from the zero. But you have some some somewhere in the mind. Okay, be careful on, on this number or this number because he was a little bit dangerous last match. He was doing something dirty things. Okay, he's too fast. Maybe some steps and something like this, but we are preparing yourself for, also for this. Now, would you prepare yourself emotionally now when you're going to certain places as well, knowing that this crowd here can be very tough on referees? 
of course, the same. You know, you are prepared. Okay, we have even in, in this our regional league, Saha league, it's many courts that, that it's lots of uh, people inside, you know, nice in the people, atmosphere. You know, yeah. so, <laughs> Arena for <yeah>. referees. <laughs> <laughs> we are, used, let's say, used to it. But of course, sometimes, you know, you need additional preparation for this. But uh, about those players, I think that the, our preparation, especially for top uh, referee group here, for the players, uh, we know them for for five, six years, you know. We really don't need to prepare like in the past when we start, you know, to watch the, especially this player or this one. Uh, no, now even we on, on when you have uh, analyze, uh, it's forbidden to, to, to comment this or this player. It's only situation, you know. Usually when we have uh, clips, we are not talking, oh, this player is dirty player. No, no, no. We only show situations and work on situ- situations. But it's easier for us uh, because I really think they respect us uh, totally and we respect them totally, you know. it's And it's some mutual... Uh, and there's a reason why I think it's a little bit easier. But still, of course, if some <laughs> some new team, let's say, come to Champions League, usually they are not playing there, then you a little bit more watching them to see what you can expect, what you say audience is there is a little bit uh, noisy than on other places yeah. but that's normal that's uh, usually what we do in, in everyday life you enjoy the pressure no yeah. pressure no fun no pressure no fun <laughs> <laughs> i think that's a perfect way to, <laughs> to finish this up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys thank you very much for your time thank it was you a pleasure much. really yeah. really informative as well really really nice